Well, like G.D. Johnson would always say, thank God it's Friday. Uh, it's a beautiful Friday morning. It's time for us to go through the papers. I'd like to start off with uh, the leadership newspaper this morning. And G.D. Johnson joins us via Zoom. Thank you so much for being part of The Breakfast. Good morning, Mr. Welcome back. It's good to see you. It's good to see you, you too. Morning. All right, then let's start off with the headline on the leadership. It talks about terrorists creating parallel government in Kaduna, uh, according to the governor, Erufai. Now, uh, the writer says they are exercising control over socioeconomic activities, justice dispensation. I won't use military to rescue train attack victims, President Mohammed Buhari is quoted to say. And troops nabbed two more suspects in our church attack. Uh, I tell you, writers underneath the bold caption. And just before we move away from the leadership, governors can't stop $418 million Paris Club payment to consultant. Malami is quoted to say, Nigerians' youth will determine outcome of 2023 elections. Coker, uh, Bishop Coker, is saying that on the leadership. Now, on Bowery ambush, army gives Captain Samuel four others befitting Barrow. Very sad and saddening. After 90 death, Rivers community raises the alarm over missiles outbreak. Anxious Kenyans await next president after tight vote. The headlines on the leadership. Let's go back to the punch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already laughing at what I've seen on the front page of the punch newspaper. But um, it's quite interesting. It's all action. And uh, I can't wait to get J.D. Johnson's thoughts on this, on these headlines. A big one there on the front page is a uh, headline that jumps at you. We case use Atiku Tambua uh, demands recognition as candidate. One wonders what he will say to the court. We'll look at the details as we go on. The uh, governor asks court to order INEC to remove Atiku's name from candidates' list. Let's see, uh, uh, I'm sure he's talking about, I, I'm assuming he's talking about the, um, the primaries there. Uh, we can fault Tambuel's withdrawal for Atiku, says PDP acted in bad faith, uh, bad faith rather. Uh, Atiku has not been served, says media aid, and PDP spokesman keeps mum. I think this time is the time when the spokesman would be refusing to pick journalists' phone call. Uh, they do it a lot when they don't know uh, when you have internal wranglings in the party. All right, uh, Buhari security guards killed in ambush, buried. These are the, uh, the guards of the brigade of guards who were killed uh, in Abuja. Um, they are not the president's direct personal guards, it must be said, so people don't get confused. Uh, it's made our souls rest in peace. Very sad one. Nigeria loses 101 billion naira worth of oil, says OPEC. Uh, Malami NGF on collision course over eight, 418 million dollar deductions, okay. Um, controversy is Seplat denies ExxonMobil deal cancellation. FG rules out interference in Aquarius UK uh, trial. Fire engulfs National Assembly store, destroys documents. <clears throat> FG hasn't informed the ASU of cash crunch, or so decay. <laughs> um, Canada bound postgraduate student killed. Edo family and demands justice. Sad one. Sad one there. And doctors decide on strike Saturday. Sunday begin advocacy visits. Uh, doctors decide on strike Sunday uh, begin advocacy visits. As some of the headlines on the front page of the punch. And you can see a picture of the burial of some members of the armed forces, uh, the Brigade of Guards, to be precise. Excuse me. <clears throat> we take a look at the Daily uh, Trust newspaper. Uh, looking at the Daily Trust newspaper, I, I, th I think that the headlines this morning are really very interesting. They have some sense of, uh, I really don't know if to say it's an irony or some sort of sarcasm right there. And this says, we won't use force to rescue abducted train victims. That's what the president is quoted to say. But you know, those who are abducted, these persons actually use force. Now, you know, the president is quoted to say, we won't use force. But those who kidnapped uh, citizens, I mean, those law abiding citizens who go about their business as taxpayers were abducted using force. And some of them were not sure, but we can't use force, you know, to rescue anyone or uh, you know, those who have been abducted. We can't use force because if we use force, it would trickle down to affecting 
the terrorists themselves. That's what he means. Okay. Meets release victim says neutralizing terrorists won't stop. We can't afford ransom. Families quoted to say presidential guards killed by terrorists buried amid tears. May their soul um, continue to rest in peace. Very saddening. Governors protest over $418 million Paris club deduction baseless. This is what uh, the Attorney General of the Federation is quoted to say. No going back on tariff high can cause data. Finance Minister is saying, hey, Nigerians, you need to swallow this one. 1,755 terrorists surrendered, 29 killed in two weeks. The military is reporting a war attack. The Murik 6 compensation for Fulani victims. And man promises woman marriage and dumps her, uh, dupes her of five millionaire. <laughs> Organ have a sin. Federal government rules out interference in the queer murders trial. These are the headlines on the Daily Trust newspaper. The last paper on the table is a nation, uh, the big one there. APC vice chair, Northwest governors behind Tinubu. Uh, says uh, Lukban, no discord in tune in ruling party. Why Lalong uh, won't resign as campaign DG? Some are saying that he's a Christian, and since the party has a Muslim Muslim ticket, he should uh, resign. Of course, he uh, made some reference to the Pope, and uh, a group known as Concerned Catholics of Nigeria have said says that um, the Catholic Church should suspend him, and he should uh, attend a public apology. They're not even sure he's a Christian, he's a true Christian, so they want to investigate. You know, all sorts of <laughs> drama, uh, you know. Well, let's move on, let's move on. Uh, we have more from the, the nation. Government won't interfere in the query matters case. Uh, no going back on 5% telecoms tax, says federal government minister aware of duty. When the minister says he's not aware, you know, when the minister says he's not aware, you know what he means. <laughs> um, oh, I wasn't informed, I wasn't carried along. <clears throat> Military arrest to Iswap kingpins over war attack. Uh, Buhari, Nigeria must get 2023 census right, uh, hopefully. Yeah. Governor's objection to $418 million Paris, Paris Club refund, mayor noise, says Malami. Uh, okay, don't forget, it was also an issue of, of, of uh, uh, disagreement at the last Federal Executive Council meeting, the likes of Raji Fashola and uh, Boss Mustafa raising their voices against um, this uh, uh, proposal by... Um, uh, Zainab Ahmed, who uh, has been getting a lot of publicity for wrong reasons these days, and Malami, they both said we should, <laughs> they were seeking approval to draw these bonds. We'll look at that as we go on. Terrorists creating parallel government in Kaduna, Erofai tells Buhari. All right, the same Erofai who told President Buhari that uh, the terrorists had issued a, a threat to kidnapping the said The president was not aware, you know, so uh, he had to tell him. I'm sure he's telling him another one the president may not be aware of. Uh, presidential guards killed by terrorists buried, and the Loma proposes 50% tariff hike. All right, I think that's the way to put it. This is not President Harris personal, you know, guards. But um, PDP crisis, are you won't quit? Party X Hotels, Wiki. It's becoming a hilarious drama. Um, seven Yahoo boys jailed in Ibano. 37-year-old beheaded in church. Really sad one. But let's uh, bring in J.D. Johnson at this point. Uh, J.D. Johnson is a senior lecturer at Nigeria School of Journalism. Uh, J.D. Johnson, good morning to you once again. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I, I, I can only... Yes. Well, yeah, I can only pre predict that some of these headlines will be making you shake your head. <laughs> you know, but 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 let, let's start with the one that came out yesterday in Abuja uh, at Asurok Villa. The president met with uh, some of the representatives of victims of the Kaduna Abuja or the Abuja Kaduna train kidnapping, the AK. AK-9 uh, kidnapping. This is uh, on the front page of the Daily Trust. We see uh, the headline on the front page of Daily Trust. It says, we won't use force to rescue abducted train victims. Um, so the president met with the representatives of families. And I listened to what he said, you know, and also read the transcript of his, his statement released by uh, Garba Shehu. The president said that um, several proposals were made to the federal government as to how to rescue these uh, uh, kidnapped victims and their lethal, you know, methods that were proposed. And after careful con consideration, uh, the government decided not to. They decided reluctantly um, uh, against using these lethal methods. But he says that he wants to assure the family members that they're doing everything 
possible to release them. That uh, looking at the recent, you know, victories of the army, you know, in terms of the fight against terrorism and all that. So my, my question to you, Jim Johnson, if the president is saying they don't want to use lethal methods because they want to ensure that there is no collateral damage, at the same time saying that the military is attacking terrorists and having successes, and he showed that the armed forces can release these people. How exactly do you think the president intends that the armed forces will, will set them free, if not through force? That's, that's double speak from the president. Well, if the president has stuck to, to the line that in order for them not to have collateral damage, an average person will understand that, that trying to rescue these people using, using all forms that is possible to be used, then we we'll understand that because they are casualty, there's no doubt that they will be used for them because you are. If the president has, has used that as an excuse for not using a phone, we we'll understand. But the president at the same at the same breath saying that the military is winning the war and at the same time not interested in using force to rescue the citizen does not does not pick well, does not show the consistency. As far as I'm concerned, even for the representative of the of the victims to be selected to go and visit the president in Asuero. It does not even make sense. It should have been the other way around. It should have been the president or the representative of the federal government that should have gone to see the victims in their respective, in their respective homes or respective state, or whether they are gathered in Cardinal State Government Lodge or wherever where these victims or in Abuja where these victims will be seen rather than for them to go to. to us. But that's really, that's really. Well, when the some members of the Chimbo guys were arrested, they were taken to us, they were shipped to us, and the president welcomed them. That's, that's our approach to things. Our approach to things is that our president are larger than life, they are larger than the citizens that employ them, they are larger than the citizens that voted for them. So, the citizens you don't want to see them in their palaces, they don't come up with the citizens in their, in their neighborhood. So, that's, that's my take on that because what Better means we can be used to send signals to the security, to the terrorists, rather than to use maximum force in ensuring that we 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 we, we, we dealt a decisive blow with them. That's that's my that's, that's my take on that. And besides, uh, we've seen rescue missions by developed nations across the world. There are American, there are there are Americans taking the teams in the northeast of Nigeria, and they come to Morocco or Tunisia, and they came to Nigeria to rescue the American. The Americans that were taken as hostage, there was not the same collateral damage. And we have a street in our own country, we have the forces, we have everything. We couldn't do that. It talks about the failure of, of military intelligence, it talks about the failure of the security agencies that we have in Nigeria. You see, you relate that story to the story of the reply, complaining that the um, terrorist has formed parallel government. If the government can come out to see terrorists as formed parallel government in Kaduna, what the president should have done is to declare a state of emergency. A state of emergency should have been declared in Kaduna State, whereby an administrator is appointed so that normal law and order will be restored back in, in, in Kaduna State. But what do I know? I don't know anything about security. As far as those that have served in military and who are serving in the military, all of us that have not been to military school or have not been in military are bloody clear and we know next to nothing about military operation, we know next to nothing about intelligence gathering, um, which invariably is the pure job we do as journalists. As journalists, what we do is to gather intelligence, we process information, and that's the key element of security agencies, gather information, process information. When information is processed, the processed information is what we call intelligence, that you can make sense out of it. and. Uh, I don't think we are making sense out of the information we have collected from, uh, from right. terrorists here and there. All right, Jide, let's also look at the Daily Trust. It talks about uh, security. And on this note, 1,755 terrorists surrender and 29 killed in two weeks. This is what the military is saying. Do you think that this is a rational no. thing? Which, I mean, the fact that you have Boko Haram terrorists... 
which prison have been putting them? No, they, they are surrendering. Oh, yeah. they, it's not that it's, it's not true. saying that they have been arrested. I mean, to surrender is well, like you're no, giving no, no. up. The, the time for in 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 in, in, in war situation, the time for you to be arrested is you surrender. Rather than being annihilated, you 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 submit your arms and you raise up your hand. You have surrendered. That's the time. So they they are meant to be to be arrested and to to be to be put in detention until a judicial process is put in place for for. For, the, for their case. So, who are these 1,715 people that have been arrested? Who are they? What are their identity? Where are they housed? Or where are they detained? These are all the issues that we need. Other than for, this, for the Ministry of Defense to come out and be giving us figures, giving us figures, figures that we can't ascertain. The authenticity of of of, of 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 the figures. So, what are the identity? Can we get the identity of these people? We are what they are. We are what they. Uh, uh, where did they surrender? At which front? I don't know. I don't. I don't. I just don't know. I just. So so are so are you know. saying so are you saying that this you don't believe you know this report of the military. What I'm saying is that it's for them to validate their claims. I'm not saying I don't. It's for them to validate it, validate it with facts. Well, don't give us numbers. They've been handed, give according to the report, speech. they've been handed to uh, the relevant authorities. Members and families have been profiled and they've been handed to the authorities. Correctional, correctional facility, the police, or what? Relevant authorities are because what we need in the fight against there is, is clarity. Government needs to clarify. When you clarify issues, it becomes plain, it becomes transparent, and it becomes understandable to the larger public. Maybe the government is just taking time so they don't make the mistake, just as it happened recently. Uh, you saw the fact that Akira Dulu has come out to say uh, with the name that was published, there was a mistake. Uh, the name, you know, those those who attacked uh, a name that was found and published as an attacker of the or an escapee of the Kujie prison attack was also uh, named as one person that was arrested uh, as a person who attacked the or uh, or church. So maybe the maybe the government is, quick, is taking the government their time is quick to, to publish the identity. But, but don't you think and that this might just be enough? to publish the identity of Boko Haram terrorists. But there were massacred. Government was quick in publishing the list. And the images of, of, of their alleged suspect. We are harassed for terrorists. All we have been seeing is numbers. Before they used to be repentant. Now they are surrendered. Surrender the uh, terrorist. Well, could you don't do this to me? <laughs> Jimmy Johnson is, is <laughs> he's not having it this morning. <laughs> You're not having it. This. There's nothing Messi can do to convince you. <laughs> it's been quite interesting. Um, I mean, it, it's it's a it's a. I've been I've been wondering what what exactly will the president do um, for 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 these people? Um, you look at the fact that these these uh, released kidnapped victims who he met with, none of them was rescued by the government. No, not even one, you know. And each of them, most of them, when they come out, what they say is that, oh, please, we're appealing to government to help rescue uh, our colleagues. I, you know, Sheikh Gumi is the one who had to, looking at the video footage of the flogging, he now said, okay, let's help out the families, the family of six, the two parents, mama and papa, and then the four young kids who are there. Um, he said the senator was, he was instrumental. He didn't tell us what, I, what I, um, a ransom was paid, but even a senator, an unknown senator, was instrumental in helping facilitate it. Then I think we can put one and two together. Then they also released a 60-year-old woman uh, because of her health, failing health. 
you know, I don't know how Shegumi from that video was able to tell that the man that was being flogged had those kids. But, well, that's what happened. And, each, and the man is a, is a worker, he's a member, he works with the National Assembly Service Commission. And he said nobody from the National Assembly did anything to help him officially. The National Assembly did nothing to help him. They didn't say anything about his plight. Neither the National Assembly Service Commission say anything about his plight. If it's to do contribution, you know, uh, Osusu to go and pay for his <laughs> ransom. They didn't do it. Rather, they sent representatives to London to go and watch a Kure Madu. You know, I mean, you know, answer, answer his father's so, name. So these are the things we're seeing. Um, so, so I mean, we, we'll, we'll keep watching this space, but I understand why um, um, uh, our guest, uh, Gillian Johnson, is not, is not having it messy um, this morning. Uh, Gillian Johnson, please, let's move on to another story. And the one that uh, interests me is the one on the front page of uh, The Nation. Um, we start with Wiki and Atiku. Uh, Wiki has finally uh, gone to gear two. Um, and uh, Wiki does not do anything without first strategizing. I can tell you that. He, he has sued Atiku and Tambuel. He's demanding recognition as candidate. This is the headline, of course. Uh, the writer to that, the paper says the governor is asking the court to order INEC to remove Atiku's name from the candidate's list. Where, did you see that coming? Well, I, after the primaries, I was, I was on this too, and I analyzed Atiku stepping down, and I pointed out this, that that is open to litigation. But as far as I'm concerned, I think it's too late for me to adopt this strategy you now. He should have done that shortly after the power. That's, that's, that's my take on that. He has the legitimate right to challenge the process. Because as far as I'm concerned, that process was unfair. It does not conform with, with best practices when you talk about um, um, convention, con convention and party primaries. Because the contestant, cannot come after pitching for votes, cannot come after and use the same platform to say that he has stepped down and is asking his, 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 his delegate to vote for social so and so percent. Maybe he therefore requires that, uh, you know, it will be a process where we would begin to make legislations and make laws to ensure that uh, all of this, you know, does not become an uh, issue. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Mercy. J.J. Johnson. Yes, please, go ahead. So, if you have used, if you have used the platform to, for the second time to pitch for another candidate, every other candidate deserves the right, um, deserves the right to come and use that platform. That's the truth. It's like a player has been substituted in a football match. A player has been substituted, and a player that has been substituted is allowed to come to the field of play to join, to join, to join his team to play against other team. That's the case level. He should have done that earlier, the first week, the second week. And I think a lot of steps have been taken within the party. I, I, my, my advice to Governor Wick is for him to learn from the experiences of his, of his predecessors from River State. Um, they've, they've learned to take the Peter, Peter P when it comes to. No, look, Peter Audily, Peter Audily, Roti Miyamichi. You should learn from Roti Miyamichi. Gide Johnson. Miyamichi came, came second in APC Pamari, and then he just went and just kept his cool planning. But, but just quickly as, as, as we go, because we have to go now, Gide Johnson, I'd like to ask you do you think that this case is actually a legal issue? or is a moral issue? It's, it's, it's both a legal issue and a moral issue. It can be pursued the, the, pro, the process. The process, if you are talking about the process, once the process is flawed, it can be challenged, it's a flawed process. So would there be laws that would back this particular act? That's what it, because that would uh, be the argument. That, we're not trying me, to preempt the courts time, or the tribunal the, the now, but we're just saying. Um, the timing is for me. She should have done that earlier than now. And then that issue will be looked into. And I, I'm not too sure about the provision of the electoral law because there is, there is, there is a time limitation to when you can go for pre electoral, pre -electoral matters with, with the electoral act of 2020. I mean, we're looking at the issue of contention here, the bone of contention, not the time frame. We're looking at you know what transpired now. Do you think it's a legal issue? I mean, are there laws that would back this, or it's just a moral thing that you say morally this is not right, 
or the law actually stipulates, uh, you know, the Electoral Act or the no, Constitution? It, it, it is, it's about the process. The process is for the courts to determine whether the process is fair or unfair. You know, I'm not talking about the fairness of the process. So it's not for the courts. It's for less for me to approach the court and tell the court that, you know what, it, like the illustration I gave to you, under normal circumstances, if that should happen in a football game, the other team will be disqualified. All right. You know, Johnson, we have to go. We have because to go. We have to go. But, but, yeah, but you, you said it all. You know, there's a legal issue here, and that, uh, uh, you know, a few weeks is just wasting his time. But um, um, maybe you should not underestimate Wiki when it comes to, uh, 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 you know, the courts. He, his, his record or track record is quite impressive. I mean, look at the governor who was able to, able to, able to defeat the federal government when it comes to VAT. My take on this is very simple. We get to go back home and look at what has happened to its predecessors in river states. Okay. And I've come to the national stage. All right. We, we, have to go. we have to go. We have to go. You've, what I, you've said what it all. <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy Johnson. Dignify silence. Thank you. Thank you. Because of time, we have to go. Uh, but it's been a thrill having you, you know, analyze with the papers with Mercy and myself. And we look forward to having you again yeah. next week. Like Mercy Thank reminded you. us, thank God it's Friday. You know, like you usually say, thank you for your time. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. All right. Anyway, we have to take a break now. We'll be back with more analysis. Of course, we're looking at uh, some amount of money the federal government has recovered uh, of looted government funds. So what? Exactly is this money being used for? What can it be used for? We'll be right back.